Alright, this is Eliel Array. Welcome again to another MP3 tutorial. Uh, just before we uh, move on to our some questions, let's do one last overview. I think on the first two parts, I didn't do quite justice on um, making sure that we got this principles down. The um, there are four phases. There are two cycles in females in mam mammals with an edge in human beings, mainly human beings here. Um, the first is the ovarian cycle, which is constituted of the follicular phase and the luteal phase, both in green or right here in yellow. This is the ovarian cycle. The ovarian cycle has to do with the maturing of the follicle, ovulation, which is the release, the release of the ovum from the ovary into the abdominal cavity, and the maturing or rupturing or denaturing of the corpus luteum. That is the ovarian cycle, all right here. The second cycle, which is a uterine cycle, has to do with preparing the uterine lining for implantation. So that has to do with the prolif proliferative phase, which is a, an estradiol or estrogen and progesterone work. And the secretory phase, which is when estradiol and estrogen thicken the endometrium lining, and if there is no implantation, they shed this off which we have then menstrual flow and the cycle starts all over again. So this right here, it should be like your chart, your map. Uh, actually a lot of medications you prescribe, doctors just use this little bar right here to prescribe a lot of medications for any forms of disorders. Um, uh, what's another thing that we probably need to touch on before we get to questions? Okay, let's go right here. Polygular phase coordinates with the uh, proliferative phase. I think I mentioned that, and the luteal phase coordinates with the secretory phase. Um, okay, estro estradiol. Now there are two of them. There's estradiol and there's estradiol. Estro both of them are estrogens, sex hormones. Estrogens are primarily responsible under the stimulation of FSH and LH for the development and maintenance of secondary female sexual characteristics. That's this guy right here. Progesterone is involved in the development and maintenance, not the generation, development and maintenance of the endometrium lining. That's progesterone right here. Um, so whenever you have that, uh, and again, if you don't understand any of this, if you're just watching part three for the first time, I'll go back to part one and two, um, just so you can get a basic idea of where we are. And we're just doing this so we can be able to answer some questions that we're going to go here in a little bit, some little tricky questions. So if Progesterone shuts down. When this rises, it shuts down GnRH, and so GnRH in the, in the um, hypothalamus it shuts down, automatically shuts down the production of FSH from the anterior pituitary. Menopause, um, that's also another thing. Menopause, which usually occurs between the ages of 45 and 55, is a direct result of this decreased responsivity, um, responsiveness of the ovaries to FSH and LH. So that means fewer follicles right here are being developed a month because of that decreased respons responsiveness and most of them fail to rupture. So they never go through, most of, them, most of them never go through ovulation. That's another thing they need to look out for when it comes to menopause. Everything kind of works a little differently. Now as a result of decrease um, responsiveness to this guys you never see this drop so usually I'm sorry you you never see this rise because the corpus luteum which primarily um, generates progest progesterone um, it's not being developed it the corpus luteum most of them doesn't rupture so it doesn't you never get this rise so a decrease in progesterone and estrogen as a result Remember that negative feedback as a result, since this is decreased, there is no negative feedback on the hypothalamus. Does that make sense? So FSH and LH will lose their feedback inhibition. So that means plasma concentrations in women under, under menopause are usually increased. Plasma concentration of FSH and LH in women undergoing menopause will usually increase as a result of that. Uh, so that's also one thing here. And lastly, the secretory phase, again, estro estro estradiol or estrogen and progesterone stimulate enlargement of the arteries here. But then secretes nutrient rich 
system to sustain the embryo and if that doesn't occur this sheds off and the uh, glanding causes uterus to contract shedding up endometrium tissue with blood and fluid and, that was, and that's the end of the uh, menstrual cycle in females and predominantly in human beings um, animals most animals will work a little differently and let's just touch on that before we move on uh, the menstruation only occurs in not it, uh, menstruation occurs in all mammals right however here's the thing in human beings females go through the menstrual cycle where the endometrium lining shuts off from the uterus and sexual receptivity is not limited to a time frame and that's in humans and in, pri in primates predominantly not just all mammals humans and primates the estrous cycle is when the endometrium lining is reabsorbed by the uterus there's no fluid loss sexual receptivity is limited and so and so most animals um, like dogs for example that go through that have the estrous cycle um, only copulate around this um, season that's when people say oh the, this animal is, is in heat and so that's the only time usually that the females are receptive to mating in humans it is not like that it's different so sexual receptivity is not limited to the menstrual cycle so that's just one key note to add on top of all what we've already discussed here and so now let's go now to some tricky questions let's go to part 